video is sponsored by Squarespace. My name is Vanessa Joy. I've been a wedding photographer for the past 20 years and I am a Canon Explorer of Light. You are about to see multiple wedding ceremonies. Now, there's not much talking going on because the ceremony is happening, but you'll be able to see how I position myself, how I stand, how I get out of the way, how I make sure I'm unobtrusive, how I deal with the videographer there for the day, and of course, the photos as I take them and a glimpse of the settings. I hope you enjoy, sit back, relax, save this for later in case it's too long and you wanna come back to it. And uh, yeah. because I've been using Squarespace for over a decade and you can see it at vanessajoy.com. I decided to use Squarespace so long ago because it was and still is one of the easiest ways to make a website out there hands down. Squarespace is a platform where you can create beautiful custom websites in just a few minutes. Choose from a plethora of templates where you can easily plug and play your own work. It's an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. We all know that an online Online presence is crucial for your brand, so build one that stands out. Head over to this link for my exclusive 10% discount on your first domain at Squarespace. Now back to the video.
be seated. I want to welcome you all to the wedding ceremony of Heather and Stephen. And, uh, oh, excuse me a second, hold on. Uh, if you have one of these, turn them off. You thought I was going to answer it, right? You know why? Because you don't want to miss any of the action tonight. Put it away. Don't they look beautiful? I think they deserve a round of applause. So uh, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight, but before we get started, in the eyes of God, we want to uh, move forward. And um, every one of these ceremonies always takes a little twist for me, so it's interesting. So we're going to do a couple of scripture readings. The first reading is going to be done by uh, Chris Diamond, Stephen's brother. Chris, come on up here. scripture from Romans chapter 12 verse 9 to 12. Don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on that. Thank you, Chris. And Stephen Zurg is going to come up and do a reading for us. A reading from 1 John. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. Thank you, Stephen. So, um, everyone, everyone here knows that how much Heather and Stephen love Pelothoc. Uh, what you uh, also don't know is every time that I get a chance with my family, I talk to them about Peloton. Well, it's really about God, but you're going to see how it's about Peloton today. So every day, I guess, when they get up, and any of you have a Peloton get up, and you head over to that bike, there's a screen on there, I imagine. I don't have one myself. Screen on there, and... Well, let's say Stephen gets up and he's a little cranky that day. And, um, you know, a little grumpy. And we all hear those voices. We all hear those. Uh, sometimes you come home from work and you're tired, right? You need to have a little more patience with each other. We all experience that, right? We need to have a little more patience with the people around us. And we don't, but you you are. But life is going to be like a Peloton, right? You're going to have good voices. You're going to have challenging voices. You're going to hear the voice of God in each one of your minds encouraging you to do the best that you can, to be the best that you can. When you're running out of steam, when Stephen's running out of steam on that bike, Heather, you know he's got a half hour to go. And you're like, come on, Stephen, let's go for it. You can do it. Stephen, that's the voice of God. When you're encouraging Heather to finish out her workout, that's God telling you. When you're loving and patient with one another, that's the voice of God. You know, I've talked to you both and all of my family about the voices, the thoughts that we have and where those voices come from. And if we just focused in on the voice of God, 
and all of the Switch. compassion and mercy that God has for us. And we extended one another that compassion and mercy. Because today you're starting the longest Peloton ride of your life. It's not, you're not able to get off the bike anymore. You're going to have seasons where you're going to be able to kind of slow down and coast. You're going to have seasons where you're going to have to work hard at it. Going to be on that kind of ride, and God is going to be there with you. So every time you think about your Peloton, every time you're on that bike, I want you to think about the voice of God calling you to be the best that you can for each other, to love one another, and to show have that love be demonstrated so others can see that love and grow strength of it. look into the eyes of the people around you and you draw strength off of them. That's the voice of God. And so I need you to hold on to that thought. I need you to think about that. And that's why I use that Peloton. Because I know you're on there every day. And people have said to me, you know, you've been in my head all day. No, I haven't been in their head. God is in your head. And God's going to remind you every day to encourage one another and to be strong for one another. And so, we are now going to go into our vows portion. Stephen and Heather have their vows.
We all know that in life, not every day is roses and rainbows, but knowing I have you to lean on has made some of the hardest times. It made some of the hardest times seem not so tough. I know when I hurt, you hurt too. I know you are wholeheartedly in everything with me. I know that whatever life throws at us, we will be okay. We have each other and I promise it's you and me forever. Steven, I promise to love and support you no matter what path we travel down. I promise to always have your back and to be without question the most loyal person in your life. I promise to believe in your dreams, but also push and challenge you if it will help make those dreams a reality. I promise to show up every day for you, Desi, and our future family. I promise we will still have the hard conversations, the ones most people talk don't talk about, because those are the ones where we grow and love even deeper. Finally, I promise to search for the good in every situation we are presented with. And even if I struggle to find it at first, I will look to you because you are the good. I'm so excited that I get to spend the rest of my life with you. Thank you for choosing me. I love you. Five years ago to the day was our very first date. I remember what you looked like, what you ordered, how nervous I felt, and virtually everything that we talked about that night. Who could have guessed at that moment that in five years, not only would we still be together, but instead of sharing introductions, we would be sharing vows. Whenever I actually imagined what this day would look like, I never thought about who would be here, what food we would eat, would we have a band or a DJ or really anything related to planning the wedding whatsoever. All that I had on my mind and all that I envisioned was what would you look like when I first saw you? What would you look like walking down the aisle? What would you look like when we made eye contact for the first time? And what would you look like standing here across from me? I always knew that you would look beautiful. And now that we're actually here, the truth is that this is what I see. I see someone who is selfless. You are a living example of someone that time and time again puts the interests and needs of others above your own. And I see someone who is honest. Even when it's uncomfortable, you speak your mind and you're willing to challenge my perspectives. And I see someone who has unwavering loyalty. We are no longer members of the Diomedes or the Zurichs as we know them. We are now our own family and you never fail to put our unit first. I see someone who is loving. I've watched you in many roles. Daughter, sister, sister-in-law, friend, aunt, coach, co-worker, girlfriend, fiance, and as of today, I get to call you wife. I think there are several people in this room that can agree with me that you fight hard. But more importantly, every single person here knows you love harder. You demand the best from those around you because you never fail to give it back in return. I see someone who is both strong and brave. Forget about the strength that you show daily just to deal with me in a one bed, one bath apartment. More importantly, it's difficult to handle the emotional, mental, and spiritual load of having a family member with cancer. Every single opportunity you have to relieve your mother's burdens, you never hesitate to do what must be done. The courage that you, your parents, and your siblings have displayed throughout Elle's battle never ceases to amaze me. I certainly see someone who is beautiful, the most beautiful bride that I could have ever asked for. I also see an incredible dog mom, an amazing future mother, and someone who makes me laugh and cry tears of joy at all the right moments. Most of all, when I look at you, I see someone who's got my back. I know that through it all, as you like to put it, you got me. So aside from assuring you that I'll do my best to close my activity rooms every day, <laughs> these are my vows to you. I vow to match your selflessness and always put you first. I vow to always match your honesty in all things, especially when it challenges one of our perspectives. I vow, excuse me, I vow to also have unwavering loyalty to our unit. 
It's us now, and no interest is above what matters the most for you and me together. I vow to match your strength and to match your courage as we navigate life together. I vow to be a great dog dad, father, and partner. I vow to pray for you. I vow to support you. I vow to make you laugh and cry tears of joy. But most importantly, I vow and I promise that as long as you live, yes. as long as there's breath in my body, I got you. I love you. My life is bound to you. With this ring, my life is bound to you. Let's give each other a nice kiss. <laughs> Blessing for you. I you. <laughs> Be right there, almost there. Uh, Father, we thank you for Stephen and Heather's life. We pray your hand is over them always, that your face would shine upon them, and that you would go step out in front of them every step of the way. Let them hear your voice. Let them know it's you. Give them the strength they need. Praise in Jesus' name. I now present to you for the first time in public, Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Diamond. Hey, how did the ceremony go? Did everyone get married? I know everyone got married. This is not a what's that show? Ultimatum. Love is blind. Love is blind. Everyone got married. Everyone gets married in my show. Anyway, let me know down in the comments if you have any additional questions about ceremonies or what other parts of the wedding would you like to see? I'm all about strapping GoPro to my chest just to help you out. Make sure you hit subscribe. Subscribe. I should just stop talking. Stick around. Stay. Stay. Bye.